Tonight is going to be a huge show, so stick around. This is Marfugel News, the only live call-in show somewhere. What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marv. Tonight's show is going to be absolutely loaded, so make sure to check our website. There's going to be a lot of additional co uh, content tonight, so make sure to go over there, marfuglenews.com. With that being said, we'll be right back. All right, all right. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugel News. If you've never been here before, this is a live show, and you can call in at 2244 marf uh, Of course, there's a lot of stuff to go over in a short amount of time. In fact, there are, uh, I think, 36 uh, stories to go over. So a lot of different things that we're going to be talking about. And, of course, uh, you guys just feel free to, to get in either one of the chats and say hello. Uh, roll call call where are you guys from any of that is acceptable at this point all right just to start off and make sure everybody knows nothing in the show should be considered legal medical or financial advice the views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself dex or anyone else with the show you should always do your own research and consult with professionals uh, you should also know that the internet is full of fake news so please take everything with a grain of salt today's news could be tomorrow's uh, conspiracy who knows all right, we're going to get into a lot of topics in a short amount of time, so I'm going to bring in Dex. Dex, uh, what is going on tonight, and how are you doing, my friend? Uh, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. Hey, uh, doing well. Actually, uh, DLive's not uh, streaming, but I'm working on it, so everybody hang tight. It should start shortly. All right, and then... Uh... Okay, so we might uh, we might have to come back or do a restart, but who knows? Uh, first off, we're let's good. see here. Um, We're good also, if you're missing notifications, make sure to sign up for Marfugel email alerts and our push notifications. You can actually get push notifications directly to your phone. So if any of the platforms are having problems or technicalities, uh, technicalities, then you know where to get them. In fact, uh, it will go right to your phone. And then tonight, we have a lot of additional content. Not all of it is going to be able to be talked about because there's about 30 different stories. For time constraints, uh, some of this you can actually access with the second device or take a tablet, and you can actually go to marfuglenews.com and you can go to our website. In fact, I'm going to show you real quick. It's very easy to navigate. You just go to tonight's thumbnail uh, to Hell in a Handbasket, or that was shortened and then of course you'll see tonight's thumbnail once you click that you will see that every single article every single tweet every single video every single document that we show you here today we give you a source for so you don't just think oh this guy's saying it uh, you know where it's coming from what the source is is it authoritative if it's opinion if it's rumor uh, we clarify all of that and we take hours to do each and every show. So all of this is going to be uh, on here tonight so you can actually go in one place. If you're watching the replay, you can also go in and read the entire articles. If you're somebody who uh, gets up in the morning and reads the news, we've hand collected all of the important news that we believe uh, you should know and it's all right there. With that out of the way, uh, we are going to get straight into it. Now, it says, forget the fifth generation record-breaking laser signal from satellite could be the key to faster smartphones. Now, again, this is supposedly something that is going to uh, try to replace uh, the, the fifth generation of, of Internet. Now, Dex, you're a tech guy, so you, you can explain this a whole lot better than I can. Uh, is this, this something that you would know about compared to me? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, ultimately, light does travel very fast. Uh, obviously, nothing travels faster than the speed of light. And so to think about using laser light to transmit and doing that in a wireless way is kind of a, um, an interesting concept. And it sounds like somebody's really done a lot of research to to prove whether or not this can actually send the data uh, across a distance uh, in the open air. 
Now, it says, with all the controversy surrounding the new, faster fifth-generation networks launched around the globe, could there be another way to get faster wireless internet connection? It says, according to Australian scientists, there just may be. A new study shows that smartphones could speed up thanks to a record-breaking laser signal sent from satellites. It says, without any disturbance from the atmosphere. So this is kind of uh, out of left field. How did they not uh, kind of figure this kind of stuff out before? Uh, this is literal lasers coming down from uh, a satellite. You would think that this would be kind of a route that they would have taken a long time ago. Lasers have been around for a very long time. Uh, this is, I believe, where they're going to kick in uh, the, of course, light emitting uh, or, or Li-Fi. They actually call it uh, light emitting uh, wireless internet, whatever it is. Uh, this is a real thing. It, it uh, the the concept behind it is pretty brilliant. If if it worked exactly how it it says. Say you have an LED light uh, in a bathroom. That LED light would actually be <clears throat> giving you a signal to your phone, so you would see that, and you would be able—you would actually be able to get internet from light anywhere. So if you're in a mall, the lights in the mall would be the internet. Uh, if you're on a, a street lamp, could be the <clears throat> uh, be the Li-Fi. Uh, your home light bulbs. I don't know exactly how it works, but it's basically uh, a technology that can be in that. I don't know how close this is related to that, but it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy stuff. I mean, one thing that I was talking to my wife about uh, just earlier today is that uh, how fast things have changed just in the last 40 years. And one thing that was very unique about my generation, I'm 35 or turning 35 in, in April, the one weird, weird thing about this is that my myself and my wife were part of a very uh, kind of very specific uh, group of people. I remember before cell phones. I remember before Internet. I remember before computers. Uh, I remember when we used to go outside and play instead of sit in groups uh, in the living room at Christmas and and uh, sit there and play online with uh, all of my family and friends while we're all sitting on the same couch. Uh, that was not a thing for us. You know, we went outside and played. We played kick the can. We played uh, all these games, hide and seek. We threw pine cones at each other. We did those things. They don't do those things anymore. We have seen it go so fast. I was there for uh, America Online. You know, you've got mail. Uh, I was there for all of that. Now, some of you older than myself, of course you saw that. You saw even farther back, and you're probably reminiscing, well, I was here before this and that. But the, the one point that I want to say is that I'm in this weird generation where we saw both and we grew up with, you know, by the time I was uh, 11 or 12, we had America Online dial up, you know, loading uh, screen like this. And then in the next couple years after that, it slowly got, uh, you know, a little bit better, a little bit better than then you had DSL, then you had uh, high speed Internet, which by today's standards is like. Just I, I can't even believe high speed that you used to pay, uh, you know, absorbent amount of money for back then is something that you would get on the crappiest prepaid phone. Uh, but again, this is something that has changed so fast. And we are in this just crazy generation where everything is changing so, so, so quickly that it's it's hard to think that, you know, just 20 years ago, we didn't have any of all of this. How is this going to affect humans? How is this going to affect uh, just in general all of the kids that are growing up with this? And it's just it's a it's a standard. And I think we've seen how the Internet has I in fact I don't even think they know the effects of what the actual internet has on people and I think right now in this year and and last year I think we're seeing it come to kind of a peak uh there at least that's what they're saying with it, with everything that's changing <clears throat> and with how much information is moving I think that uh, at some point they realized they were like whoa this is so much information moving and half of it is fake half of it's this half it's that and now it is to a point where almost the entire world said whoa we got to we got to slow this down and control it somehow that's what I, I feel like is is happening again what do you guys think? I'm going to head over to the chat before we go over to this. Makers of Sophia the Robot. This is the AI robot that they've done demonstrations. You've probably seen videos of it on my channel where the Sophia is talking with the male robot and then the weird guy with the cowboy hat uh, basically talking about his in inventions or whatever. And they're talking back and forth, very creepy, talking about the end of the world. Sophia the Robot plans mass rollout amid... Uh, this event. So the the current event that is affecting the world, they're going to do a mass rollout of this, apparently. 
Uh, so we'll get into that here in a second. I'm going to go over to both of the chats. Uh, thank you guys, everybody, for being here. Occam's Razor, it's nice to see you tonight. Uh, a few awesome people. Veteran Steve, I hope that you're out there somewhere. Thank you so much for being around. Uh, and then, of course, we have... Um, all sorts of great people, Gem Gem, Toad Man, Red Horn, Gone Girl, Jumpmaster, Bear Claws, uh, Maui Racing Realtor, uh, we've got Paul Shaggy, Jester, uh, Moody Mama, uh, actually I think you changed it just to Moody Mom, uh, let's see here, Sarah904, Miss Jackson, uh, we've got uh, here Jet Rover, thank you so much for being here, All Things Athena, says Scottsdale, Arizona, Crystalline Energy Time, uh, Carlap says smile and be kind, it's contagious, I do agree, and I'm sorry that my last show was, I, I was a bit down um, because just everything that's coming down on us. Imagine going to your work every single day, not knowing if you're uh, going to have a job the next day. It's almost like you're at a temp job where they say, hey, any day you could be fired. That's kind of how it is being in social media right now, especially if you cover anything, um, anything. I mean, I I could cover a uh, a, a bowl of soup with uh, saran wrap, and <laughs> I, I might just get uh, knocked off. Grace for you too says, "Good to see you too." No D live notification though. Weird. Uh, that's all right. Thank you guys for showing up. Anyways, Stormy seven five seven two. Good evening, y'all. Uh, it just keeps getting crazier. Uh, we've got Edgy Whalen, Va Shadow, Duck Hawk, Va Shadow again. Thank you so much for your support tonight. Majestic ears up. Over on uh, YouTube, we have all sorts of folks coming out, uh, and it looks like. Let's see if I can do this right here. Bam, bam. And that didn't do it either. Pop this over. Always a pleasure. Uh, who is that? Marilyn. Thank you. Kristen Williams. We've got Dawn Fast. Uh, Jones at Dave. Uh, Rhea. Hey, how are you doing? Kid Power and Wife. Uh, we've got Beer Buds. Is that really your name? That's awesome. Uh, Mama of Six. We've got Joe Adams. Hey, what's going on? Uh, Lady Lexi. We've got Transform Today. I love it. it. says, happy days. I love it. I'm in a good mood. I hope you guys are too. Stay safe, everyone. What's going on? West Virginia Prepared Mine. Hey, it's nice to see you uh, back here again. I know you're going through uh, lots of moving and changing and things. Uh, let's see here. Miss Marie. Hey, how are you? Jstone78. We've got all the legends in the room. Uh, Jstone, West Virginia. Most likely we've got Bones here, I'm, I'm assuming. Chance Paladin, Unknown Woman Channel. Uh, April Osborne's probably floating around here somewhere. Lo thank you to all the mods. Make sure to uh, thank them. In the future, I'm going to be doing a mod show so you guys can meet all of the people that have been around and behind the scenes for about three years helping this channel progress. So I really do appreciate uh, them as well. <clears throat> Make sure to do that. And uh, Texas and Charlie 64, all sorts of great people. We'll get back to you guys in just a sigit, uh, s just a sicket uh, or a salient prayer or a silent prayer, either one. Uh, let's see here. That's what I'm going to say when I screw up here. Uh, let's see. And let's get back to this. Makers of Sophia the Robot plan mass rollout during the event. And it says, taking care of the sick, providing therapy, and combating loneliness. Could the peen mm -hmm, accelerate a relationship between humans and robots? Now, one thing I think of is the just a plethora of movies that have shown kind of robots becoming humans' assistants. Uh, as far as, I, I mean, like, there's a million of them. I think iRobot I is one of them uh, with uh, Will Smith. But, I mean, you're talking about, in fact, if you want to list some of the movies where they have... Uh, some sort of turmoil out of having a robot as an assistant or a robot basically every movie has it to where in the future robots are a part of the family that everybody has their assistant robot in fact I think there's several shows that are on right now that have this kind of same scenario uh, played out in fact one of them is better than us I think that that's the one it was on uh, Netflix that's something that a lot of people have been having me try to watch. I think it's Russian. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but people, a lot of people are talking about it, saying that it's got all these weird things in it, uh, especially with w uh, women and men and, and dating scene in the future. They actually talk about this in real news, saying that in the future there may be a robot dating scene, uh, scene which is just absolutely 
insane. It says, quote, social robots like me can take care of the sick or elderly, Sophia says, as she conducts a tour of her lab in Hong Kong. It says, I can help communicate, give therapy, and provide a social stimulation, even in difficult situations. Since being unveiled in 2016, Sophia, a humanoid, uh, humanoid robot, has gone viral. Now the company uh, behind her has a new vision to mass produce robots by the end of the year. It says Hansen Robotics, based in Hong Kong, said four models, including Sophia, would start rolling out of the factories in the first half of 2021. Just as researchers predict the uh, the event here now will open new opportunities for the robotics industry. So saying because of what is going on right now, human beings uh, will be less likely to go into somewhere, pay somewhere, or you'll have a robot assistant do it uh, for safety reasons, right? It says the world of CV is going to need more and more automation to keep people safe. Founder and chief executive David Hansen said, uh, standing surrounded by a robot heads in his lab. Now, one thing that I think that is on the back of everybody's minds is probably the very beginning of this when they said, you know, it's going to be two weeks. I think that we can all, you know, wholeheartedly say like, you know, obviously it lasted a lot longer than two weeks. If you guys remember, they said everything, you know, we'll, we'll do this thing for two weeks and then it will all go away. It's been over a year. And now they're clearly telling us it's going to go on for much, much farther. Uh, big corporations are preparing uh, for the long run. So if it's not this, it's the newer strain. Of course, uh, now the current prez actually just uh, set up, a, I think, a, a travel ban South Africa because there is that new strain going around. So lots of uh, lots of evidence that in the future it is going to be a whole lot different than it is now Lola Cafe thank you so much Lady G476 thank you so much for your support tonight Suzanne Homer says love you Marv thank you for the show Gabby so is it true uh, let's see here will be I can't um, you're t I think you're saying T-Man will be the 19th prez this March I don't I don't know how 19th would work um, but again, thank you for your support. I'll have to figure that out when I'm not live. Amanda Evanson, you guys are the very best. Thank you for both of all you do. Thank you, Amanda. I appreciate that. <clears throat> and then Aaron Dilbeck, thank you for being the last one out. It says, keep up the great work, Marfugel and the wife. I love you guys. I do appreciate your guys' support right now. Doc Bill, been around since 1952. The 70s were the best. I think there's a lot of people that uh, say that. Yeah. I personally, a lot of people don't agree with me, but I was very little, but I, I, I guess didn't live so much as, as, uh, and remember as much of the eighties. Everybody says that they hated the eighties. I thought that the eighties, uh, just looked like a whole bunch of fun. Everybody was like, well, then you probably weren't in the seventies. Anyways, if you guys want to support this show further, I would highly recommend checking out an EMP Shield. There is a reason we are partnered with EMP Shield, and it is one that I firmly believe in. Uh, this is, again, a, a device that has not only uh, been behind a company that's been contracted with not only DHS, DOD, uh, and now officially on the Demso team helping protect the Texas uh, grid. This actually protects against all three phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3. Uh, and again, this also protects against the natural kind, solar flare protection up to 228,000 amps and even as a regular surge protector on a grand scale uh, that can protect you against lightning. This is something that, you know, some states don't deal with as much, but if you are in a state where you get a lot of lightning, if you fried a lot of things because of it, then this is definitely something to look into. Other than that, though, we have shown you all the evidence uh, as far as why an EMP shield for your car is definitely a smart idea. If you uh, get caught out somewhere after another Carrington event or an EMP, it would just be smart to have. If your car doesn't run, how are you going to get home? If your generator doesn't run, how are you going to power your, uh, your home after uh, the grid goes down and stays down? So again, go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP. It's 100% American made, veteran owned business. All right. And then uh, we're going to go uh, to the, again, folks, get your calls in right now. The number is 2244 marf uh, I believe we're going to be going into that here in just a minute. Uh, Dex, uh, my air table actually didn't load. So if you could, uh, if just let me know when and uh, who is, is calling there. Yeah, Adam, we have uh, Jennifer on deck. 
All right, and then uh, go ahead, uh, Jennifer, you can come in now, and then we'll be covering absolute proof that aliens follow planes suspected Foo Fighter caught on film in Pakistan. What's going on, Jennifer? Hello? Hi, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing good, and um, now that you just got there talking about it, EMP shields, I have three of them. I have one for my home and... Actually, I have four of them, one for my home and three for vehicles, and I love them. Yeah, the vehicle ones are easy to put in. I put. I was surprised I could do yeah. it myself. <clears throat> Took like five minutes. Um. So, Jennifer, what are you calling about tonight? Well, it's not really anything that you're talking about tonight, but you talked about it a few weeks ago, and I hadn't had a chance to call in. It's about UFO sightings. And about okay, the go early ahead. 2000s, um, early 2000s before, unfortunately, smartphones. Um, me and my best friend was going down a country road um, in southeast Louisiana um, on the border of Mississippi. And um, it was right about dusk. So it wasn't just totally dark, but it wasn't daylight either. It was right in between. And um, we just looked up, you know, and there was this big black triangle just hovering right above the trees and above our car. And it had a bright light on each corner and some other little lights underneath. Um, and she looked at me and I looked at her and we had no earthly idea what in the world we were looking at. And we had our, our children in the back seat and they were like, whoa, what is that? I'm like, I have no idea. And it stayed there for a few minutes. It was probably no more than about 50 foot from above us. It did not make one sound, no sound whatsoever. And then after maybe about five minutes, it went completely sideways and disappeared over the trees. And it went so fast. It was like, and it was gone. I mean, it did not make that sound, but that's how fast it went. So it was hovering right above us. It was about the size of three houses put together. It was huge. It was huge. And it covered the whole car and the whole road where we were. And then all of a sudden, it just went to the left and disappeared. I mean, as quick as I've seen it was, as quick as it was gone. And I have no idea what it was. And I didn't think much about it back then because it was 20 years ago. And we didn't have a camera on our phone, so we couldn't take a picture of it. And I just assumed it was just like um a u.s aircraft of some sort but now i realize a lot of other people have seen it too and i've googled it and i've actually seen pictures of things that i swear is the same thing i've seen i don't know what it is i'm not saying it's a ufo i mean yes it is it's an unidentified flying object i have no idea what it was but i don't know of any human made aircraft that does not make a sound and that can move that quickly and drones, I don't believe, even really existed maybe back in the late 90s or early 2000s. So, and, and I don't believe in aliens. Um, I, I just don't. But I do believe there are other entities and spirits out there that which maybe could possibly um, act as some. I don't know. So well, there's my story. So the one thing in common, though, is that everyone says, and I said this on the last caller that said that, Everyone, this is where when you have, you know, one or two people say something, then, you know, okay. But when you have millions of reports and they're all the same, it's just like if, um, you know, uh, when police catch five robbers, they separate them and they try to get all of their stories. And if they don't line up, then something mm -hmm. is kind of fishy. But when you get all five of them and right. all of their stories line up, then they're probably telling the truth. As far as millions of people saying that they don't hear a sound, that's the weirdest part, is that these things are you know, completely silent. And I think that that would have been harder, right. other than the movements that they've made, because I've seen some like 70s footage of, of some hovercraft type things. You know, the movements I almost think would be easier to, to do, you know, with government technology than the sound. Uh, mm -hmm. Just to have a silent mm -hmm. uh, submarine was a giant deal for, for U.S. and Russia. So I don't understand that, uh, you know, how more people don't take it seriously. But, you know, most people believe, uh, at least in something, that something's up there. Yeah. Well, I did not believe what I had seen, and I hadn't talked to this best friend in, in like 15 years. So I texted her the other night, 
And I said, okay, I'm going to prick her mind and see what she remembers. And I did not tell her anything about what I remembered purposely. I said, hey, do you remember blah, blah, blah night and everything? And, and she's like, yeah. I said, tell me what you remember. And she told me exactly the same thing I remember. So I say, okay, I know I'm not going crazy. But here's my thought. I don't, I personally don't believe in aliens, but I do believe in the Bible and I do believe you have good spirits and you have bad spirits. And I believe that, and it's my belief, that it's getting close to the end of the world, that I'm thinking seven year tribulation coming and you have demon spirits and they, somebody has to say, why did the Christians disappear? And I think this is, it's not a con, you know, a C-O-N-S-P-I-R-S-E-Y, but I think it's demonic activity of a good way to explain where the Christians went. But that's just that's just my thinking. It's just biblical thinking. Well, you know, it, also the thing is, is time is in a in a different realm here as far as, uh, you know, a hundred years of our life could be one second in some other life forms, uh, lifetime. So, yeah. So, well, th- thank you so much for calling yeah. in, Jennifer. I appreciate it. And uh, please don't be a stranger. All right. Thank you so much. Y'all have a good night. All right, Jennifer. Have a good night. Uh, that was Jennifer. Again, thank you. Uh, I'm going to try to get Airtable so I can see. What state was Jennifer from? We didn't... Actually, I don't think I, I heard that. Do you know, Dex? I felt like it. Uh, uh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Okay. I always try to always try to think of like what state so I can kind of get a mental picture of where it happened. Now, it says, absolute proof that aliens follow planes. Suspected Foo fighter caught on film in Pakistan. It says the term the blogger used to describe the strange object originally employed by allied pilots during WW2 to describe inexplicable aerial phenomena they encountered. It says blogger and UFO hunter extraordinaire Scott C. Waring, who we've actually covered before, has revealed yet another strange looking phenomena. It says that may or may not be an extraterrestrial craft spotted from a plane in the skies of Karachi, Pakistan. It says, according to an eyewitness account feathered in Waring's blog, the plane was cruising at an altitude of 35,000 feet when those on board noticed a brilliant white round object in the air above and to the right of the aircraft. It says the eyewitnesses said that it was difficult to discern the object's velocity and it could have been either hovering or moving slowly. So this is, again... Uh, giant if it is truly this size in in uh, comparison to this plane some some have said that it's a portal of some sort I mean look at that that is really uh really spooky if you guys want to go over and check out this video you can go to marfuglenews.com and check out UFO sightings daily that is uh, I believe his channel It says, quote, that's the most focused Foo Fighter photo in history of UFO research, uh, Waring declared, using the term that was coined by WW2 Allied Photos to describe inexplicable airborne phenomena. So what do you guys think? Have you seen the video? What do you think about it? You can feel free to go over and check it out. Why do they always end up in places where they're talking about uh, nuclear events? Uh, again, they just had some news in that area, so I just think it's kind of weird that they always pop up. But apparently, they're also following planes. Vanessa Doe says, check out greaterreset.org. It started tonight till 29th. So inspiring, we could all use some. I think we all need to uh, refresh just our, our positive thinking and everything else. Just, you know, we need to... We really need to get back and as a group and as as a people just get really positive and really happy. Like who said that earlier? Who said that? Um, somebody said smile more. It's contagious. Maybe that was that was that's something that I believe that we should all be doing uh, no matter what. And it, it sometimes you almost have to force it. But that's the time when it really matters most. It, it really does. Uh, Kelly2334, thank you for the diamond. Edgy Whalen, Bear Claws, uh, we need people, not robots, Lisa K23 says. I agree. I mean, right now we have a situation where the robots are going to be helpful 
and it's always going to be put in kind of the, the, the text or the pretext that it is going to be helpful to us or it's going to save us or it's going to be convenient. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been put in place that were for convenience that ended up uh, right after they happened. You know, people were saying, this isn't this isn't great, actually. Uh, so, you know, people will only see later uh, that that might be a mistake. The, here's where I see it really hitting is people losing jobs because of robots. And I've covered a lot of these stories. The mods have been really great about picking out stories like this. Bones, uh, J Stone, and WV. Uh, as far as like pulling out these stories like, uh, you know, robots replacing everything from plumbers to pilots uh, to air, aircraft like this. They have actually tested aircraft pilots. Now, an aircraft pilot is one of the last... Uh, you know, it's actually a very small uh, group now of these careers that are normal careers that you can actually have a good, you know, make a good living and sort of the American dream, at least here. I don't know about other countries, uh, but, you know, it was a, a medium paying job and you could save up money and, and you know, have have enough to, to buy a house or to buy, you know, take care of your family. Uh, truck driving, another job that is a good career that somebody can actually go through all the time, especially if you're driving a lot, you have no chance to spend your money, you have time to save it. Uh, cross country truck driving. Well, guess what? Robots are going to replace these eventually. And I'm sure truck drivers, some of them, like Bones, they're saying, you know, their their hope and everything they're putting into it is saying that no, robot could never replace humans. But for some things, they can. Uh, long If they're doing selfless uh, or self, self-driving self cars and self-driving semis, and this becomes kind of the, the norm, we're going to be seeing uh, almost like a train on the road. And this is what I mean by a train. Uh, just as far apart as train car cabooses are, you would see uh, semi-trucks driving in these lines and it would just be one solid line. They would be going 60, 70 miles an hour. Uh, who knows? They might even be connected and be able to... I actually heard that they would be connected for long hauls or long straight straightaways and then disconnect for turns and city driving. So if you can imagine self-driving... These things are on a straightaway through Kansas or something. They could connect and save gas by, you know, kind of using this airline. Think about that. Think about in the future seeing just a huge train of trucks uh, driving this huge load across the country. It's actually really crazy to think about. Now, airplane pilots, they have actually had this robot. We covered that last year. Uh, even flipping burgers down to the, uh, you know, uh, the lower paying jobs like fast food. You're talking about a robot that could flip and make a hundred burgers in 10 minutes, uh, which actually beat it. I remember they set it up and it beat the actual fastest cook at like a Burger King or something. And it was able to flip and cook perfectly. Uh, and 100%, that's the thing that these companies are going to look at and go, this is more efficient. This is less pay. We don't have to pay for health insurance. If they trip, they're not going to trip on the job. There's no lawsuits. Uh, there's no complaining. There's no moaning about overtime or anything. It's a robot. They would have it maintenance. In fact, if anything, I think that robotics repair, that is a career uh, that I might have my kids go into. What do you guys think, though? Uh, thank you, Lisa K. I appreciate that. Dark Winner has followed. I appreciate you following. Uh, nice. Thank you, Polecat78. Thank you as well. Welcome to the Fugle Fam. Voice to Skull has just followed. Uh, nice name there. Simulation7. Haven't, haven't uh, seen you in a bit, so thank you so much for coming. And it uh, looks like you actually got a uh, uh, sub there from Lisa K. And then it looks like Bear Claws again. Thank you for your support. Annette LaPau. Uh, Vanessa Doe, I appreciate that as well. All right, uh, let's see here. Moving on, we have California lifts the CV stay at home order statewide. Uh, now, again, this is something that you're going to want to go over to the website and look into this. Uh, all across the country, on the West Coast and the East Coast, a lot of these are being lifted, and a lot of people are asking why. Uh, again, now there's actually new strains. A lot of people are criticizing that it seemed like the timing of it was a little odd. You can go and read the rest of this over at marfuglenews.com. I highly recommend it uh, if you are especially in California. But again, uh, East Coast, all of these other places are now lifting these uh, kind of really, really hardcore, uh, I guess, lockdowns. And they are slightly going away. So is it getting better? You know, why are corporations still looking at this long-term thing of having robots for convenience because of 
uh, this event. It's it's pretty crazy stuff. Uh, let's see here. Dex, again, remember you guys call in 224400-MARF. We have four spots, three more to go. If you have not called in before, this would be the night to do. So uh, let's get into it. And then first off, if you want to protect yourself against cyber threats, I would highly recommend NordVPN. If you haven't checked out a VPN, then you should have one. There's all sorts of reasons, but including uh, getting access to information in other countries. You can actually put yourself in a different country and a whole world of information opens up, believe it or not. Not only that, some people use it for silly reasons like uh, going and putting themselves somewhere else in a different country and then getting a whole other selection of Netflix videos. Netflix actually uh, chooses by region what videos you see. So you'll be able to see extra videos. If you like Brazilian television, for example, you can put yourself in uh, Sao Paulo. So again, that is something you can do. But on top of that, you can protect yourself. You can protect your devices. One account, which if you use our code, you'll save 70% off, will actually work on six devices uh, simultaneously. So use your laptop, your kid's laptop, your phone, your kid's phone. Uh, again, all with one account. You can hide your IP from the bad guys and no data logging, especially if you're using Wi-Fi. It should be a must. Marfuglenews.com slash VPN. All right, let's go to the next caller. We're flying through tonight. We have so many stories. And then we're going to talk about Mexico's president says he tested positive. Uh, and then uh, just to call you out, Tower Bear, thank you so much. Lady G476. Uh, let's see here. Kelly, two, three, three, four. Thank you again. GCL, Nana, Deborah, Jen, Wisconsin, uh, chewing, uh, Caroline. So uh, again, before we move on, Dex did, did, uh, did D live work as, as, uh, what happened? Yeah, there? This is, yeah, this has happened once in the past. <clears throat> Excuse me. What, when we start the show, uh, the stream just failed to actually connect and it was an easy fix. We just turned it off on the back end and turn that stream back on and it reconnected. So it was a little delayed to get started, a little hiccup, but um, yeah, I've seen this happen once before, but not that often. I think what happened, and that's happened with Restream too. Uh, yeah, in fact, I probably, yeah. it, it was probably turned off or something or didn't refresh or something. Uh, but either way, it looks like a lot of people yeah. said that they didn't get the notification, but that's okay. That's why we tell you to go over here and get our push notifications. Go to marfuglenews.com. Again, there's a ton, a ton of information from tonight uh, that what we there's no chance we could get the time to go over it all. There are tons of articles in there as well. Uh, I would say, you know, put put aside an hour and you'll be able to go through all of it. We've handpicked it, both Dex and I. Uh, for you to to get all that information. <clears throat> all right, uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Thank you. And Adam, do you have the caller information yet or no? No, I don't. Okay, because our next caller has some content uh, to share. So uh, we've got grace for you too whenever you're ready. Okay, let me, I'm going to pull this aside real quick. One sec. And then let me try, let me try something here real quick. And I'll, I'll get the caller information on. And then if you want to bring them in and introduce, um, I will have this up and ready by the time you're done. Okay, Hello. great. So it sounds like grace for you too. You are live. And grace for you too is a first time caller calling from Illinois. Hi, Grace. It's nice to talk to you. Yes, finally. I'm so thankful to see you tonight, and I hope you uh, you and Dex and the mods all know that we're here for you all, and we so appreciate your courage and your strength, and, and this, I'm sure that this is going to get harder and harder, but know that we really appreciate you, and we're, we're really trying to reach out to have more people, um, you know, hear this content and, and share what we can. So that's why I'm, uh, that's why I'm here tonight and wanted to share a couple of interesting things that happened on Sunday. Um, let me know when you're ready with the, uh, the small video of just, you'll see a picture of a weather radio. Okay, just one sec. In fact, I'll probably just need about 30 more seconds. Uh, let me see here. Not a problem. Well, I can elaborate a little bit. So um, I purchased these weather radios uh, living in the Midwest, obviously, we have tornado alerts and, and all different types of, you know, alerts. And these are um, 
uh, you know, mid to higher end uh, units that you can program the types of alerts that come in. So the emergency alerts, uh, tornado alerts, whether it's warnings or watches, et cetera, that come up. And they go through the normal uh, weekly testing of the signal. Um, but what happened on Sunday uh, was a bit odd. So I have three of these units in different parts of my home. And I started to hear uh, odd beeping in different areas. And when these things go off, they're very loud. Um, which is great if you need to wake up because the tornado is coming. But uh, I went to uh, the first unit and noticed that the warning watch and advisory uh, lights were blinking um, at, a, at a constant uh, constant pace. And I think you have that. Um, okay, so the first video, have that, it, shows, um, it shows the Midland. Video there. The Midland white radio. Yeah, this it's is, real quick. Okay, let me play this. I uh, try to only be quiet just because I can't silence one or the other. Uh, so one sec. Let's see. I think I might have this. There, there is no audio. There is no audio with it. It's oh, okay. Just no, the I see. The I see this. Okay. So warning, watch, and advisory, all three at the same time. Why would it do that? I uh, don't know. So. Um, I am a bit of an IT geek and uh, also do uh, audio. And uh, the only thing that I could figure was some type of, the first thing I looked at was the batteries and uh, thought that I had either some type of power outage or, or surge, which was not the case because um, I have numerous devices across the home to avoid uh, you know, damaging my electronics. And um, so, I, I re I, the first one I took the batteries out thinking, okay, that'll be it. So the, the next, probably next 10 minutes, I heard another beep, went to the other floor and went, oh, interesting. This one is in the same state, all blinking at the same time. Went to the third unit, it was doing the same exact thing. So it tested the batteries, the batteries were fine. So I decided to go to the National Weather Service uh, website and pulled up their outage map which is that next picture that you're looking at. And I noticed that um, if you're looking at uh, the one on the far right picture uh, indicates the, um, oh, there is a video of, I just went up and down the screen there. Um, but you can see all of the uh, transmitters that were out, which I thought was really interesting. There weren't any major weather events. We're having one right now, but not, not at that particular time for them to be out at that, you know, at, at that particular time. So I actually went on to Discord and, um, you know, put the word out there and said, is anyone else experiencing this? And they had the same, uh, same response. <clears throat> so I thought this was very interesting that this would happen across the United States in so many different areas. Um, if there wasn't any major, um, I don't know. It just looked like an RF interference for some reason. Uh, I'm looking, I've looked at the current state of the system and it looks like the, um, the Midwest and the East coast are still having issues. It looks like a lot is um, offline in Georgia. I've been watching this stuff for a long time. I've been watching you for probably at least five to seven years and uh, I geek out on all of this, and and you know, I'm a watcher like many of us uh, out there are. Uh, this just seemed odd. So, so let me ask I, you this: th that we would not be able to get these emergency alerts if the if the system went down. I mean, we may get them on our phone, but not to these weather radios. Well, and that, that's the question we all have: <clears throat> if such a big event happens that you know all of them kind of go into play. If, so the the presidential alert that was tested in in uh, October third, twenty eighteen, uh, that was that was kind of giant because people didn't realize that that is the the doomsday alert. So say if that went off, uh, you know that would be one thing. Uh, but as far as these regional kind of areas, I, I wonder how many of these are there and what 
this seems like it was all on the coastline, like on the West Coast and the East Coast, and then right in the middle at Texas, which, you know, Texas has its own grid. It's kind of separated. This was right outside in Oklahoma. I just, I wonder if there was any reason for the placement of this. Um, could there have been kind of an adversary out in the water trying to test something that was blocking it? Could the U.S. Uh, government be doing a drill and knock those out and see if they can get around it? They've done tests like that, too. Uh, they have jamming software. They've purposely jammed their own GPS. They've purposely jammed uh, their their satellites so they can drill uh, how to fight without them. It's obviously something that they should have readiness for and, and something that, you know, is a smart thing to do, especially if this is that would be the possibility if if we ever did get any kind of uh, invasion event. So I think this is very interesting, Grace, for you, too. Thanks, Adam. I I found that uh, I think my thought line went along with yours there, where if there was some case of something along the coast that was moving um, and for some reason, uh, you know, turning those signals off so communications could not pick up that movement was uh, kind of one of the well, like the first a submarine. Came to mind. What if a submarine went down from there, went around the Santo Domingo, then went uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, then came back, that then went out uh, there uh, by California? What if something? Because well, the one thing I do know is you know uh, countries like Russia have gone right into our bay. In fact, in in Seattle, I believe, in the Puget Sound, they went in and they took pictures of themselves and made a documentary about how they were able to get past our submarine defenses and they popped up right in our Puget Sound with a background of 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 the city. So I mean, that's like that's pretty scary wow. if they can get and that was their point they were making. Like we can get right into your backyard wow well i just wanted to share this with everyone and again thank you and and dex and the mods for all that you do and we are so appreciative and we you know stay strong brother because we are praying for you and your family and and uh know that if you ever needed to, to pick up i mean we're looking to uh get ourselves out of uh the state that we're in right now um, but that will come in due time. So thank you for all you do. And, um, we'll just keep our, uh, like you always say, has, you know, head on a swivel and we'll bring, uh, bring back to the fam, whatever we find. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Grace for you too. You have a great night and, and uh, God bless you. So, uh, Dex, I, and I'm calling out to everybody. If you follow this, I think it would be great if different Fugle fam members, uh, if, you know, if we all tried to kind of do our part, uh, maybe check uh, intermittently and see if if you see anything like this happen again and line it up with any kind of weird events. Uh, again, th there may have been some sort of drill that went along with this. Uh, you know, Pacific Defender might have been going on or, so or something similar, right? Pacific Defender already happened, I believe, but something like that, like a massive drill where they purposely knock stuff out and then test without it. We could see if there's something that's factual that lines up with that and see if there's any kind of connections. Anthony Mann, thank you. So says, I can't emphasize this enough. Church, wake up. Sophia is, quote, giving life onto the image of the beast. Revelations 13, 15. By his stripes, we are healed. Um, a lot of people do not like the fact that robots are, are getting so smart. Uh, Elon Musk, for example, said that he believes that over a nuclear uh, event, he is more afraid of, of course, uh, AI being our biggest threat. Do you guys agree? Put it in the comments below over on YouTube. Again, even if you're over on DLive, uh, feel free to help us out. Again, go over there and comment. I'll be reading the comments after each show. Thank you for doing that in advance. And if we can get to 5,000 likes, which I don't think we've ever done, uh, that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, make sure to check if your like button over there is broken. Uh, another thing, a uh, very odd thing that I'll talk about later, but it seems like some platforms actually don't show all the people watching. Uh, DLive does a really great job of showing everybody that's there. But I think it's maybe because uh, how their system works. I don't know what, what's going on there. But if you like, then we know you, you stopped by. Mc, McVansicle says, Today, Today's the tomorrow you prayed about yesterday. Now you know why. Pray like you mean it. 
Uh, McVansicle, thank you so much over on YouTube. Vidcom, Paris Island Marine Corps station is closing. I don't know what's going on with that. Vidcom says Paris Island Marine Corps is, is, station is closing. Thank you for the heads up, Vidcom. I will check it out. Uh, Deborah Chirk, thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you for the, the support there. No message, but uh, feel free to do, do one uh, next time. All right, let's get back into it. We've got a lot more to cover. Oklahoma lawmaker proposes Bigfoot hunting season. Yeah. Again, now, I don't... I, I, I have lots of friends that uh, believe in a Bigfoot creature, and I'm actually a, a believer of uh, Loch Ness Monster because I do believe a lot of sea monsters and a lot of or a sea animals and creatures lived through all of the disastrous events that have hit Earth before. Um, if you can imagine, if uh, a meteor hits Earth and you know we're 75% water, water is there, that something could hide down there. We have explored our ocean. Uh, less than we have explored space. That's at least the, the fact that they go by in the history books, that we still have less of our ocean explored than we do of space. And that's because of human uh, actual limitations, which those limitations are getting pushed, mind you. We are now able to go deeper than we ever have been before. But because of compression and things like this, uh, you, you know, you could put steel anything down there and it would crush it like a tin can. Uh, there's not always been that. So I've always believed... <clears throat> That it's not so kooky to think that there is a creature that might have survived all of these events. Uh, they talk about it in you know all of the holy books, these huge, long kind of ple pleosaurus type things. Um, I think that they could if they were elusive enough. We have discovered animals now in you know the 20th century in the jungles. Uh, we keep discovering new animals. We discover bigger animals. Uh, they discovered like a new boar last year that's like, you know, five feet, five and a half feet long. So it's like, if it's not not a very explored area or somewhere where we, we can't go, then, you know, that's something that I always think of. There are so many animal traits, like the octopus at the bottom of the sea has such a crazy chameleon uh, type thing that they do is I mean you could you could hold up this coffee and just like in uh, Finding Nemo or Finding Dory, uh, they can change color and match it exactly. I mean it's scary. And if you actually look at the science behind their skin and the reflectors, they basically have like a LED TV on every part of their body. It's nuts. Uh, also, they have reflectors to change the colors completely to basically be any color uh, and mix it up. It's insane. They can hide in a coral reef and you'll be looking right at them and you can't see it one bit because they can match it so perfectly. If you ever go down that uh, rabbit hole on YouTube, uh, look up octopus and and these squid things. I mean, it's insane. That it's It's literally something that you'll be in awe by, like one of those life documentaries or earth documentaries but my point is bigfoot though i have a little bit less belief in but i have friends that believe in it and uh, i have friends that even go hunting i'm in washington state where a lot of folks think that there is something out there the one thing i would say in support of it is that what if there was a creature that did you know on both sides if you believe in evolution or not uh that that adapted to hiding that was so elusive and so skittish that it even hears a sound and it goes into hiding. That's something that could be possible. That's the one part I, I do this. But then you have these high profile people and they're already trying to grab people in this kind of world and uh, make them ashamed or this or that. So I thought this was kind of wild. You never see uh, people in this kind of position say something like this. Uh, but does it almost make them look worse? Uh, it says, a mythical ape-like creature that has captured the imagination of adventures for decades has now become the target of a state lawmaker in Oklahoma. It says an R House member has introduced a bill that would create a Bigfoot hunting season. Representative Justin Humphrey District includes the heavily f uh, forested Ochita uh, Mountains in the southwest uh, southeast Oklahoma, where a Bigfoot festival is held each year. He says, issuing a state hunting license and a tag could help boost tourism. So he's actually thinking of making it legal to go on these hunts. And Well, in a way, they would be charging you for hunting something that 
in real world effect doesn't even exist, right? So maybe it's just a way to get extra taxes. I don't know. Dex, if you have a thought about this, you can chime in. Uh, it says Humphrey says Bill would only allow trapping and that he also hopes to secure $25,000 if uh, as to be offered as a bounty. Michael Holmes, a spokesman for the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conversation, 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 Conservation, which oversees hunting in Oklahoma, told television station Coco that the agency uses science-driven research and doesn't recognize Bigfoot. What do you think? I know there's some folks out there that actually go on hunts, so maybe that's offensive. Who knows? Uh, it says, I, I, Kara Fuse says, I saw Alien last night called Robinette. Bird inside this crazy old man's body said weird stuff and tried to get me to his ship. Come on, man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is pretty nuts. The president of Russia has created the ultimate Bond villain's lair. It says the sprawling, ridiculously opulent and highly secured facility is perched above the Black Sea is unlike any other on the planet. Look at this thing. This is straight up out of a Bond film. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't doubt it if they end up actually renting this out to Bond films. Uh, look at this thing. It's got these gigantic pillars, huge uh, decks, all concreted out. This looks like it's a mansion for an apocalypse. Uh, does it not? I mean, like, this is insane. It says, earlier this week, an absolutely massive investigation dropped regarding a highly intriguing site on Russia's Black Sea coast reverse, referred to as the residence at Cape Idacapos. It says, or more commonly, Putin's palace. After Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, the extremely high security estate, which covers an area of just 168 acres near the resort town of Galenzik reportedly belongs to the president. It says, though a web of associates and shell companies, uh, it says it's totally unique, if not puzzling, installation that may have kept a close eye on for years. Now this new report offers up unprecedented, uh, unprecedented, pre oh, gosh, I can't even talk tonight. Uh, come on, man. <sighs> this new report offers unprecedented insight into where it came from and what it actually includes. It says the Anti-Corruption Foundation, also known as its uh, Russian acronym FBK, released the investigative report, which is presently available only in Russian. But it says it's still worth exploring in full on January 19, 2020. It is based heavily on financial records and other documents that the organization obtained from various sources. It also documents the organization obtained, uh, and it says it includes never-seen-before exterior views of the property, including its Italian-style palace, ice rink, amphitheater, and more, as well as highly detailed interior depictions of what main residents uh, might eventually look like based on floor plans obtained from a whistleblower. Don't know why you need a whistleblower for an estate. Showing opulent amenities, including a huge pool, a theater, a casino, a lounge, with a pole uh, dancing stage. It says, among others, it says FB, FBK estimates that the entire estate, which it says also has features that feel more appropriate for a villain in a James Bond movie, including an escape tunnel, is worth approximately just under $1.4 billion. So if it's $1.4 billion, uh, First of all, a house even at this size, <clears throat> which again, this is a gigantic house, uh, but even looking at that size, that does not equal $1.4 billion. Well, actually, I don't know, man. The, the thing goes way over here, too. It looks like it has its own private airfield. It looks like it has the Washington Monument kind of walkway here, and it's on this coast. Okay, I get that. But still, $1.4 billion, so over $1,000 million plus, uh, 400, plus another $400 million, uh, that, is, uh, that, that means that there's something else in there. That there's some sort of high-tech shelter, there's an underneath that is probably uh, ready for anything, or it was built with the kind of materials that above ground it could uh, withstand something like that. It looks like all of the windows and things like this 
uh, might even have some sort of covers. I don't know if that's just because it's being built. It does look like there's still construction stuff out here. There's obviously this stuff. How long did it take? It took an extremely long time to build. So it sounds like each little part is being hand built and being built for a specific purpose. What if this was uh, the getaway? What if the, the president would be here during a nuclear exchange? And what if this was where they would live out the rest of their life? Even a, a guest, you know, it almost looks like there's an apartment building behind it. Maybe that's where uh, the other people will live or other families or something. I don't know. This thing is absolutely gargantuan. Uh, How so deep do you think it goes? That's another thing. I mean, this could go underwater. This could have, this is another thing I think that this thing has. I bet it has, well, so it, they said it has an escape tunnel. What if it has an escape tunnel that goes out to the water and then a personal, I mean, this is the president of Russia. He could, he could put uh, carriers outside of this thing. You realize that? Like he could, he could literally put uh, two Navy carriers right outside in the water and then have like an escape tunnel with a speedboat. Uh, of course, he's got yachts. He's got everything. I mean, he's got ultimate power. So I, I, I think it, it, it probably has, uh, you know, kind of a CIA Area Fifty One kind of underground as well. That that's just too much money. It, and it goes that that hill behind it almost looks like a mountain, right? So it could easily just go back and down. Up oh, under it, all oh that yeah. Bedrock. Oh yeah, you're right. And that possibly could be something like limestone. I wonder what you know that area is actually made of. If that's limestone, it would make sense as a uh, kind of a bunker. This thing kind of reminds me of, uh, what do you call it? Uh, green, what is that? Green Acres or not Green Acres. That's the show. Uh, Briar Ridge or Green Briar. Green Briar, the American uh, hotel resort, which actually was the largest kind of fancy shelter in American history. It, it has a lot of things reminiscent of that. So it doesn't look like it's done yet, but pretty crazy stuff. Uh, would you like to live there or would you turn this down? I bet most people would say absolutely. Z2M, thank you, thank you, thank you, says we got 13 feet of snow or 13 inches of snow uh, and still going. Got to crash. Got to go scoop a four foot drift out of the driveway. So I wonder if that is 13 feet. I forget which one it is. If it's a if it's a quote, then then that's feet or inches. I don't know, uh, but that is a lot. I think one one dash is feet. Sing, single one dash one quote is a foot, two is inches. Okay, well that's a lot. And, but then it says there's a four foot drift out of the driveway. That's huge. Where are you from, Z2M? Just curious. Where is it snowing like that? Uh, and then we have Voria Fornis, I think. For yeah, for Rennes. Thank you for following. Or four y h four n r e e s. Thank you so much uh, for following. And then Gem Gem, thank you so much for being here every single night and being an amazing person. Uh, Arnie ten twenty six. Thank you for following. Welcome to the Fugal Fam. Geisy Mama of Six Bear Claws and Arnie. Thank you again. I seriously appreciate that. Uh, the Google Thought Police are here. That is awesome. Uh, you must watch Brian. Uh, high impact. The end is near. Thank you for the ice cream. I love that I can say that. The end is near. Just gave me an ice cream. Joseph the Dreamer. Maui Racing Realtor. X Cap M360. Doubt her. X Cap M again. 12th man just followed. Local, I'm assuming. Uh, you, if you're the 12th man. Lisa K. Bear Claws. Gypsy Mom. Thank you so much. Philly Poo. Uh, Philippu, Vault 1111, Kristen Marie, Grego 2, Toadman, uh, Lisa K again, all of you guys, Famous Writer, thank you, everybody that's supporting over there, uh, understand that we are trying to, to build something here, you guys will see exactly why here in, very soon, and just to go back up, Moody Mom, thank you, I do appreciate that, Maya, thank you, all right, the authorities, Coast Guard, to fire foreign vessels. We're going to have you send over to this. Uh, this is important. Uh, 
important article for you guys to go check out. There's going to be a lot of extra content over on the website. You can actually uh, interactively go over with the second device and go to marfuglenews.com and go over a lot of these articles. Um, Dex, let's get on the next caller. And then I do want to remind you guys to follow me over on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at marfugel. Uh, again, we just lost 4,000 people, I think, because they've just basically cleared out a ton of people off of uh, Twitter. So it would be great if you were unsubbed or unfollowed or whatever it's called, if you could follow me again. That's, again, another place where we do uh, reliable uh, notifications when it does work, of course. Uh, Dex, let's get the next caller, it looks like. Sure, yes. And Adam, we have uh, Tracy, a.k.a. A Ferret Fanatic, online. Ferret Fanatic. Okay, cool. Ferret Fanatic, you are live on Marfugal News. What is going on? Hello. It's a pleasure to get to be on, and I wish everybody the best of everything. Oh, um, well, thank you. I was just wanting to talk about uh, uh, Zetatalk.com and PoleShift.ning, if anyone is interested in the Planet X. Um, system incoming, which I believe in. Uh, it's got all kinds of prepping information on zetatalk.com and um, all kinds of stuff on latest about the Planet X system, you know, pictures. Uh oh, sorry. My arm's going off, telling me it's time to get ready for work. Okay, there we go. Um, That's so funny. I just had so an anyway, I just alarm go off on mine. I, I have a nine o'clock. Uh, Nine o'clock alarm that's been around since I used to do midnight shows, and it says "Get ready for stream." That's funny. It, it's silent <laughs> though. So yeah. Anyways, so uh, uh, some. What do you think about all the the weird stuff that's come out in the news about uh, you know stars being gravitationally pulled towards something that we can't even see? I think that they're trying to start to get us kind of ready for it. Open, you know, open our minds a little bit about it but there's no way they could really announce it because there's nowhere for the bulk of everybody to go so no i agree they and could have done it early you know earlier but you know like way earlier and like russia has underground bunkers for um the bulk of their their uh population and they're trying to get a lot of people to whoever will go to go to the northern part of russia which will be like a safe zone now, uh, again, anyway. what you were, you were saying just even a couple of years ago is considered kind of uh, fringe, I guess. But now science, uh, even Harvard professors are saying that there is most likely something out there that is coming in and it's on this long trajectory. So would you be excited if, if they finally kind of came out and said that, yes, there is a, a giant uh, planet that kind of comes around every 5,000 years? Would you be excited if that was official news? I would, but you know, in a way, they kind of already did that back in. Uh, this is going to date myself, but I don't care. But back in '83, <laughs> I was about to graduate from high school, and there's a big thing in the Rocky Mountain News article about how they've uh, because something was altering the orbits of all of our planets, so they couldn't figure out what, and that's how we found a bunch of our planets in our solar system, and they got an infrared. Um, telescope and they finally found what was altering the orbits and it's this big old planet x on the on the on the front of the newspaper and i was you know in a big transition time in my life and i thought well i've got all i can do figuring out what to do with myself for a career and everything else that, you know this may or may not happen you know and i just kind of blew it off but i wish i would have so i wish it would have saved the, that newspaper article and then shortly after that, they denied it all. Oh, that's just a lie. That was false evidence. Well, they, did, was, they you know. did the same thing with Roswell. The next day, they said, oh, no, it's just a weather balloon. And then a uh, the yeah, few exactly. years later, they said, oh, no, it's it's uh, just swamp gas. So who knows? Maybe uh, later on it will be declassified. And they said, hey, well, we had to because people were going to freak. Well, thank you so much for calling in about yeah. it and... and uh, Thank you for the uh, suggestion. What we'll do is we will add that suggestion uh, below your name. So if anybody wants to go to the websites that she actually suggested, you can go right to our website and click right through uh, to those uh, sources. So you can get information on what she's talking about. Does that sound good? 
That sounds great. Thank you for having me on, and uh, best wishes to all of you guys. Hey, and well, thank th you for all that you do. Well, thank hey, thank you for watching, and and it sounds like you watch regularly, so I really do appreciate that, and I just want you to know that um, I'm going to keep going no matter what. So uh, please keep coming. Awesome, I definitely will do, and I keep sharing. I don't have really much money to share, but I, I keep sharing. That you know, the I, I'm literally, and YouTube and I'm stuff, literally so. asking people to do that over donate. Please share us out. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And thank you. You're doing a, an amazing job. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Uh, that was, let's see here. That was it. Okay. So we do still have, we have actually, let's, let's do it now. Let's get trace. No, that was Tracy. Oh, okay, that was. Uh, let's get Durango on. A first-time caller, 35 to 40 red orbs from New Hampshire. This should be interesting. Let's get uh, Durango. You can Hello. come in. What's going on, Durango? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good to hear your voice in person. Well, it's nice to meet you. And I'm. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm very appreciative to have you. So uh, what's going on? What What about these orbs? So basically, uh, this was, I think, approximately 2003. Uh, I think it was March or April of the year. And me and my, one of my friends had just come off the highway. And we looked up in the sky and we happened to see we did a whole bunch of lights. We couldn't quite tell how many there were at the time. And uh, the other person said, is that a uh, power tower? And I said, no, as far as I knew, there was nothing in that area. So we moved on to the next light. And when we got to that one, we stopped and we realized all of them started to move. And they changed the position of where they were. And at that point, I was supposed to turn left to go to the house that I was going to. Instead, we went straight. We decided to chase them onto the highway. Uh, as soon as I turned the first corner, there they are. were. They were basically coming over the highway. We estimated 35 to 40 of them, we, we could see, somewhere in the range of 75 feet off the ground. Um, basically, we call them red, orange, but they were kind of every color you can imagine when we watched them go. Now, just to make sure you're still there. Yeah, we're still here. We're listening. Awesome. And uh, so we so we kept watching them for a while, and, and we noticed that all of a sudden one or two would come through the crowd of them, join with another one into basically a triangle, and we slowly would watch them just basically phase out or disappear. And uh, it continued to happen, and we jumped back in the vehicle because we had jumped out on the highway to actually see them to see if we weren't like, you know, just a reflection or something jumped back in the vehicle, sped down, jumped off the next highway exit, came back around so that they stayed in our visual. Uh, that's, at this point, they were probably about maybe 10 to 15 of them left, still doing the same thing. And um, there was one last one as the rest were disappearing that just slowly came right over top of us. Probably, we, had, we guessed maybe 50, 60 feet above us. Wicked slow, we just kind of were staring at them. I actually commented to her that we could we could hear the crickets around us, and there was literally no sounds coming from this thing. And uh, we could stare right at it. Our eyes, we didn't have, like, the effect because of the light. And so it was quite an interesting situation. So the there's been recent videos. Uh, specifically, they said, I, I think people said that it, they tried to say it was uh, SpaceX and Starlink, but it wasn't. They confirmed that at least it wasn't. Uh, it, I thought want to say it was around Fourth of July or something, and they then they tried to say it was the uh, Chinese lamps, you know the the lanterns that they light up candles, um, but then they ended up confirming that there was no events that either. There was these all these red orbs that were moving around and doing different formations. I want to say it was in California. Uh, it ended up being, you know, it was right at the kind of end of uh, what's his face. Um, uh, gosh, um, having a hard time remembering his dang name. Um, uh, Alien Channel. Gosh, he hasn't yeah. been on. Uh, Secure Team Ten. Gosh, he hasn't been around for so long. I'm starting to forget oh, yeah. him. Uh, he. I think I want to say he played it, or maybe it was um, uh, Third Phase of Moon. But you know, there there was a lot of really yeah, weird was, videos of red orbs. Really I hadn't really heard of much about them until I had actually seen them. And then when we got home, we started looking them up and we were blown away by uh, how many videos were out there about them. We, we really didn't see any videos with that many of them on there. And uh, you know, they definitely weren't the Starlink cause they were 
I would say no, no higher than 80 feet above us. And, uh, and they were so close that we could tell they were, they were absolutely not lanterns. They were, our best guess was they appeared to be some kind of a, an energy orb really is, is all we could come up with. Well, it sounds like you and saw we, something we pretty much we, you know, we, pretty unique. So we both had a lot of like odd feelings after that. I, I myself had incredible dreams and, and really everything of what's going on today. I, you know, I, I didn't know much about it. And from that point, I, it almost was like I was pointed to the right places to look online and, uh, and everything just started to come together with it. And here we are. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think everybody is, is like, there's some force. It, it's kind of like the, you know, the, the, the force is with us. Like we're all pointed in this right direction. Like something random happens. I, I think that, I mean, I, the reason I, my eyes opened is somebody handed me a DVD. I think in like 2002, a regular person handed me like a blank DVD disc. And I want to say I was a teenager and, and it was a cute girl saying, Hey, check out this movie. And I took it and I'm like, usually if somebody hands me something, I just throw it away, especially like a burned disc. Like you're, that's weird. Especially back then. Exactly. Uh, you never know what you're going to see. And <laughs> it was a documentary about, uh, September, 2001. And since then it's just been kind of history. So the, there's all of us have that kind of moment. Wow. As far as what's up in the sky, I do believe that we've got stuff going on up there at all times. I don't know what it is. Um, I never claim to know everything, but I, yeah, I don't want to. I, I do believe. I want to keep you too much longer, but I, I completely agree. I think we're all on the same wavelength recently. A lot of people seem to think the same things uh, and come up with the same same thoughts, more or less. And uh, dreams are definitely coming more more realistic. Well, it's your first time call. Don't make it your last, Durango. I would love to talk to you again. And again, always have your phone ready. Uh, whatever happened in 2013. It might happen again, so get your phone ready this time. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. All right. I appreciate your time and uh, doing a great job, Adam. Thank you so much, Durango, and thank you for being here again. Uh, it, it really does mean a lot. Uh, uh, okay, that was Durango from New Hampshire. Do you have a similar story about red uh, orbs? Make sure to call in, or if you have video of it, even better, go to marfuglenews.com slash playmyvideo. Uh, I have to remind you guys, if you want to see your video, if you have crazy video, it doesn't matter if it's today or from yesterday or five years ago, make sure to submit it there. It doesn't necessarily have to be UFO related, uh, but that's you know mainly what people, anything crazy sky related is definitely going to get right into that unidentified show. Um, but as far as like if you have other crazy video, send it to us first and we'll get it out uh, whichever way we can. Veteran Steve, what's going on? It's nice to see you again. Um, there are a few people I always call out. I hope Gone Girl's okay. I hope she's doing well tonight. Bling Diva, thank you guys. Uh, again, you guys are a big chunk of, of just uh, our support here, so thank you. We do appreciate it. Uh, Bear Claws, Grego 2, Vashado, Penny Lane, uh, Ch Chiro Honky Bear. Okay, so we're going to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit different here. So... Let's see, where are we on? We have a lot of stuff uh, here that we, you know, time constraints is not going to cover. So let's see what we can do here. Now, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's one. Um, Dex, uh, to bring you in again here, I think we're going to, we're probably going to experiment tonight. Probably going to be trying something here. CJ Hope, thank you so much. I love Dosh Hounds, thank you so much. Uh, Dex, are you there? And uh, yeah, Adam, I'm here. Okay, so we got lots of stories that are obviously a, a little bit over. So should we try to switch over, or what do you think? I'm just thinking. well. There's a there's a there's a mix of things through here. Um, certainly, we need to use some discretion, but uh, certainly we didn't want to allow we didn't want this information not to be available. So every every one of these things is available on our website. Yeah, so there's there's stories that we're we're trying to build a system right now so we can get 100 percent of information out uh, as far as passing along what we think and what we hand kind of collect. We do a lot of the work for you, so you can get a lot of the information in one place. Uh, you know, we don't throw in the the you know the five things. 
I one thing I swear today it's just a, really apparent that a lot of the news, if you notice, it's like. Let me give you an example. 15-year-old girl stabbed to death in grocery store during fight with four younger girls. If you're the kind of person who wants to know about every single one of these things, that's that's great. You have apps for that and things. Um, but personally, I don't think it's... I mean, it, when it gets to the point where every single notification is like, you know, body found at this place or blah, blah, blah. If you want to hear all that stuff, uh, this would probably not be the channel for you. Um, I think that, you know those things should be covered because somebody local might go, Oh my gosh, that, you know, I know that person, but I'm not going to personally cover every single, you know, violent act or whatever. I just don't think it, it, it doesn't play into the bigger picture. That's at least my uh, opinion on it. Uh, there's some that might be very uh, big things. Like if it's somebody who's a celebrity or somebody who's a leader, then yes, I would cover that. Or somebody who just happens to be the CEO of a company or, you know, owns a very specific thing that's going against something, you know, that kind of thing. But so just know that your support is helpful. There's going to be a point. Uh, there may be a point where we have to go off and be somewhere where we cannot accept donations. So if you do donate, uh, it is appreciated. Uh, just understand that when we do, if we have to do certain things, we might not be able to accept donations. So if you want to go other ways and other routes to help us, that is greatly appreciated. If not, our show is always going to be free. Like I said, uh, that was my big thing it's ever since I started. So you guys know how I feel about that. If you watched the last show, then you really know how I feel about that. So thank you everybody for supporting. Um, really is super appreciated. Uh, let's see here. Just to go in, it looks like we still got 2,000, even though we had that kind of snafu with things. Uh, let's see here. Speaking of, I wonder where that guy is. Z2M, uh, thank you so much. You are on the leaderboard tonight with 2,000. I appreciate that. Tower Bear, uh, right behind. Dr. Neil, I appreciate that. Uh, Lisa K23, and then Veteran Steve uh, on the last spot there. Thank you so much for stopping by tonight, and thank you for your support. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go over some stuff, and then, yeah, let's let's do it next. Let's switch over for a sec. Okay, just to confirm, you want to switch yep. the flag? Yep. Okay, one second. All right, we're going to be doing a little experiment here. Let's see here. <clears throat> All right. By the way, we hit 34,000 followers. I really appreciate that. Uh, last one. Look at this. MJ1979. Thank you so much for the Ninja Gini. Appreciate that. That actually most likely puts you up right there in the leaderboard as well. This month, Gone Girl 777 is our number one supporter. Thank you. Kelly2334, who's here tonight, thank you. Seriously, thank you so much. Uh, we're going through just crap loads of stuff behind the scenes, so it is appreciated. Uh, we are going to be spending our own money on different things, so it is, you know, understood. I mean, basically, we are going to have to, so thank you. Uh, Wes, Z2M, Johnson... Uh, again, there's, I don't think there is a free, there's no real free platforms anymore. Uh, you know, depending on what, what you have to talk about. Truth Seeker 57, Mama of Three, uh, says, if you believe in God, pray. Let's see here. Mama of Six says hello to Heather. Uh, we've got Tall Drink of Water, Jam Jam, Pop a Cap. I love that. Uh, Juski, uh, thank you so much. 420, Jump Master, Recalcitrant. I love Beagle. Scan family is here. It's nice to see you here tonight. <clears throat> Zenado, Vet Wife, and Bill and Grammy. Let's see here. All right. We made that switch, Adam, and it uh, did exactly what we thought it was supposed to do. Yeah. We did, for those that are in D Live, they're, they're, they're noticing they can't donate. Okay. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to cover just a few things here. Um, there's a lot and I'm just going to hit the headlines. China authorities, Coast Guard to fire uh, on foreign vessels as U.S. sends carrier strike group to region. This is a big deal. 
Again, that's why we said yeah, on uh, DLive, uh, if you go XTAG, you cannot be supported financially. Uh, honestly, I don't think that this should be XTAGged. It is, uh, it is, you know, a lot of this is hand collected mainstream information. Um, we don't, um, you know, we're going to have to figure that out. But again, um, you guys need the information, so we're going to do it. Uh, China authorities Coast Guard f uh, to fire on foreign vessels as U.S. sends carrier strike group to region. On Sunday, a U.S. carrier strike group led by the USS Theodore Roosevelt entered the South China Sea. This is a big deal. So we'll be covering that on future episodes as well. There's a lot of stuff here. China's Z warns Davos World Economic Forum against the new Cold War. All of these things kind of add up, and it says Chinese President Xi Jinping warned global leaders at an all-virtual Davos Forum Monday against starting a new Cold War and urged global unity in the face of the CV. So lots of big things going on. And then, uh, of course, we have Taiwan. By the way, we are still alive over on YouTube, which, in fact, this is actually a green and acceptable show according to YouTube so I it is kind of wild to me that it's to the point where the decentralized platform that we all came over because it was kind of freedom of speech related is now where we it's now changed a bit so again you guys can if you do want to support I do forget to tell you you can go over to YouTube um, okay, Taiwan reports second day of incursions by Chinese Air Force so right off the bat we have Let's see here. Look at this. So Chinese authorities, Coast Guard to fire on foreign vessels as U.S. sends uh, to strike group. We have, of course, China's Z warns Davos World about a Cold War. Uh, we've got Taiwan reports second day of incursions by the Chinese Air Force. Uh, we've got India-China soldiers brawl again along disputed frontier. This one actually probably would have gone under the other one. Indian and Chinese soldiers brawled last week along the country's disputed bunker, uh, borders. Now, this is something that I think is, is something bigger to look out for because we've already seen uh, the largest kind of interaction between these two countries uh, not too long ago where 20 Indians were reported uh, perished in that event where they actually were flung off of cliffs. They were fist fighting. They were not, I don't think they were armed or maybe they just didn't take the act, you know, that far. I don't, I don't know if they had weapons, but basically they uh, battled to the point where they were throwing each other off of these huge, Himalayan cliffs pretty crazy stuff that apparently something similar has happened again on the border it says Indian officials said Monday as a month-long standoff between nuclear armed rivals continued the clash in Naku La uh, area of Sikkim came four days before countries held a ninth round of talks on Sunday on ending tensions in a, another disputed border area in the remote Ladka region and then, of course, uh, we have <laughs> this story, which you can go to the website for, uh, advising Mr. B on China. This one, definitely go to the website for. And then you have uh, Mr. T-Man establishing the office of the former president. Uh, this is uh, being made a big deal of. I don't, basically, he's setting up kind of a campaign office outside of ours. I don't know how big of a deal this is, actually. Um but again, basically, it's setting up a staff. He's going to be putting his own money up towards... Uh, they're trying to start a third party, apparently. It's going to be... Uh, let's see here. It's going to be called the Patriot Party, which is just... Um, I don't know how that will go. There's been previous people. Uh, Dex, what was it? Uh, Ross Perot tried to start the Reform Party. Uh, this, is, this isn't the first time somebody tried to start a, a separate party. Yeah, there's been plenty of chimes, and it, the only time it ever worked was when the Republicans uh, took and displaced the Whigs back, and that was during um, pre-Civil War time, I believe. So think about that. Think about that, actually. Uh, the last time it did work was right before a civil conflict. And then uh, in their first three days, Mr. B actually did 19 executive orders and a lot of people thought that t-man did that many uh but actually obama did more with five bush did zero and clinton did one 
So T-Man did uh, just as many as Clinton and less than Obama. And then Biden did 19 to undo a lot of things, including one of them was a ban on travel from South Africa. There was also one that uh, made uh, all of the EpiPens, like the actual EpiPens and medicine that there was an executive order to make it basically low priced. What was it, Dex? Epi EpiPens for allergies yeah, in, and then, in, insulin and and uh and epipens were they the prices were down dramatically from a previous executive order and then this one just went through and undid it and so now they're people now, that were getting them at a much more economical price are now going to be paying the the jacked up higher price like we're talking about for an epipen like four or five hundred dollars a lot of people are saying like what did that have to do with i mean a lot of people support saying, hey, undo everything he did. And it's a lot of it. I feel kind of just like out of spite. But that one, I don't under. I mean, that's like saying, hey, here, big pharma, here's your five hundred dollars per EpiPen. They didn't need to charge that much. Uh, pharmaceutical companies have overcharged for things for a long time. So that one, I didn't don't really understand what his reasoning. Maybe there is. If you know that argument, feel free to let us know. Um, of course, this is an article here you can go to that 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 is actually from a, a bigger source um if you've seen some of the speeches over the last couple of days i have a feeling that uh the vice is going to be taking a, a place here very soon italy's prime minister looking to resign then form new government what is going on in this planet okay so all of this and more again is over at our website so go check it out uh of course tons and tons of information here uh, Tacoma, you guys obviously saw that event. Uh, cop ran over people, and now people are pissed. Uh, they took to the streets. That is local here. That's close. So I might go do some uh, investigative reporting over there as well. Um, very crazy situation. If uh, Obviously, there's a, it, not too much of a split. Most people saw that and goes, yeah, that's pretty crazy. On the same, In the same note, um, it's just not, it's all bad. All bad and, and all bad types of situation. Lawmakers threatened ahead of impeachment trial. Uh, very crazy stuff there. Eric Norman, thank you so much from Canada. Says, I really love your show, guys. I missed the live show. I always catch up on the video later. Dex, yourself, and all of the Fugle fam are the best. Take care and have a great night, everybody. Uh, Louisiana Skywatch, y'all, please keep your eyes to the sky. Thank you so much, Louisiana Skywatch. Uh, Vanessa Doe says, ordered my Marfugle news. Uh... Can't wait to rock it. Thank you so much. Gen X uh, Voice says, thank you for what you do. We need groups again. Gen X Voice, we understand that. That's, again, another thing that we have to, we're, we're going to be paying for it. So that is, that's why we support, uh, that's why we appreciate your support so much. Uh, there, the free site Discord obviously doesn't work for many people unless, you know, it's very specific Kind of sucks. Uh, Neil Nelson, Adam, the Cobrin Bible says it documents last time Planet X came through a little over 3,600 years ago in great detail. Neil, no, I get what you're saying. And you're Dr. Neil over there, I think. Um, again, no, I, 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 I'm I, saying publicly, what if it came out and they just said it publicly like, hey, every 5,000 years, this thing's going to come. Uh, let's see here. Anthony Mann, thank you again. Kara Fuse, I appreciate all of you guys. Uh there is all sorts of folks here. Um, this is a big deal to a lot of people. Brandon Straka was uh, part of the whole walk away thing. He has been arrested by the FBI. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, so check that out. That's over on marfuglenews.com. Uh, Chief Justice Roberts will not be the one who's going to be over the impeachment. That's a big deal. Uh, and then we have, of course... Uh, uh, lots of stuff over there. The the FCC actual filing, uh, the F FEC notice of joint fundraising uh, with Donald J as this new Patriot Party. I don't know. I, what do you guys think about them naming it that? Like, honestly, I don't think it's going to help in the current climate uh, to name the party that. Uh, you know, maybe something. They should have grabbed a Greek name from somewhere else. Uh, only because it's just like now they're trying to find any reason to kind of pick that apart. 
So I don't well, know. Now I've, now I've heard since literally since the show started, um, and maybe it was a little sooner, but I, I noticed that it's now being reported that he's not even in favor of this. So oh, we so... have to like let all this iron out and see like is this is this legit? I mean, obviously it's happening because somebody did it and filed the FEC, but like is is yeah. he really going to be behind that, or are they just doing it on their own trying to encourage it? Yeah, so I mean, this is just a filing, so we don't we don't know what the heck this is. That's why I say I've said before, wait two days to report on anything with any kind of certainty because a lot of this stuff changes or you find out something else. Uh, peop the the reason why we are in a lot of uh, heat right now, just everywhere, is because people aren't waiting to report, and that includes mainstream, like jumping on something without getting the, the video or, you know, just going oh this looks like that and that's what it is and then three days later or a week later or a month later you find out all this extra information in discovery and it's like oh the this actually wasn't what it looked like that's the problem i i think a lot of us are jumping to everything a motion to dismiss lack of jurisdiction should swiftly end the senate impeachment farce is what this is uh daily caller is saying again that's over there steve hilton finds stunning cv19 connections check that out over there as well and then of course twitter unveils new bird watch a basically a snitch program uh to flag <laughs> this is backwards false and manipulative user posts so it's going to be a basically a, a karen a, a karen twitter post a, a karen twitter group and then you have california resident dies hours after getting mm -hmm, you guys know and then of course biden lifts the military band for uh trans which again uh that's all a personal opinion for a lot of people um the sports thing, the sports thing, I think, is is causing more waves as far as, um, you know, just the participation in, in women's sports. But that's all up to you guys. Uh, tonight is now over. Thank you all for supporting us tonight. Uh, again, we're trying to do what we can, and uh, times are a-changing. Uh, Dex, Adam, are we safe to flip that switch back? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. we Will do. Thank you guys for being patient over on YouTube. Love you guys. Uh, feel free. Uh, it is now officially time for the Shoutro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a Shoutro. It's where I say thank you to all the people that matter. Like Jeff P. Joanne Steen channel. Last video shows mass body bags. Holy moly. Uh, Jeff P. Thank you. And by the way, if you guys haven't checked out Jeff P. Uh, I don't even know how big he is he's a big channel uh go check him out he's got lots of uh sun stuff sun simulator sky stuff all sorts of cool videos all right let's get it pumping of the baby last week i was feeling stressed and then i saw the picture and my day improved thanks for the sunshine mikey Siggs, thank you so much for your support we need it now more than ever
Music, Gone Girl 777, Veteran Steve, Amy R, Kelly 2334. Thank you. Let's pop and lock it. Tram, Groovy Grandma, Duck Hawk, Chance Paladin, and of course, we've got Greg Rocco Jr., Hey, Nana Deborah, Alternative Me, Cheryl from Daytona, The Pippi, and Jimmy Shively, Talita, and everybody Gita, bring it. I guess April went over there. Thank you so much, April. Uh, 
Shout out to Susan Donahue. Thank you so much for being an amazing person. I love so much. I, I said I love. I, I push and shove. I love too much. Hey, got a Kimberly. Hey, Kimberly, no problem. No place, no place, no place to forgive because... I wasn't mad in the first place, and it is okay. I love each and every one of you. I never hold grudges. I am too. I, I love you so. I, I love you so. I love so much. I, I said I love.
Family, Lexi with Dex, Lisa R. Hall, and the rest with Dex. Hey, thanks, White Hill and Alice and Clan, man. Bring it right back, man. Hey, we just up with the mama going. I deep fried frugal fan, Owen Drama. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. Hope you're doing well with the Gen X voice and everybody's well. Hey, seriously, want to shout out uh, Gone Girl Triple Seven? Thank you. I know you may have missed part of the show. I don't even think the camera, the camera's dead. Um, yeah, I think it is. Yep, probably. It's gonna say charge battery. Gone Girl, thank you so much uh, again. Uh, don't know if you guys know, but they've changed things. So apparently, there's no donations on X Tag, and if you're anything. Uh, let's see. Basically, if you talk about anything non-gamer, you cannot get donations. So, some most of our shows are not, uh, you know, not political propaganda or anything like that. Uh, so we're good, but there's chunks of our show that basically we just can't. We're not. We can't. What's weird is we can do all of it on YouTube and stay green. So it's just very strange how this whole event on the 6th mixed everything up. So thank you, Gone Girl 777. Appreciate it so much. Uh, you have no idea. Uh, we basically have to do something completely crazy right now. So thank you. Yeah. 
booty mama. I bring a rat to the town with a booty mama. I got the little bird 77. Everybody knows it's a groovy R30. Triple three pay.
basketball team. I'm VIP this season. I'll be smashing them, dunking on them, bringing it down. I'm a clown, dropping it round. Got the hate this smoke, and this is my brain, and doing it like it just ain't no game. Remain in charge, baby, with Roman Bridge. Go right back in and put an extra stitch. When I do mine, crochet, just ain't gay, cause 